What's up guys? Is it Michaela here? Log date 2020. It is Saturday sometime in May. I don't know what day it is. But I do know that this is when we're going to start to finish our uh, thermal cycler from the last video. I'm incredibly excited. We've got almost all of this stuff. The chassis should be coming in a day or two. Um, but until then, we get to finish the pump circuit, wire it all together, and um, get the code set up so that everything can synchronize nice and harmoniously. So by the end of this video, hopefully, we'll have the entire thing made. In case you missed the last video, I highly recommend getting sort of caught up on the PCR project by clicking up here on, it's not a card, it's like a bar thing. It's just like, you know, it should be doing it right now. Just, just like descending, should be right here. Hopefully here. If you are all caught up, uh, welcome back. Here is what we made in the last video. It's beautiful. It's got a heater circuit and a temperature sensor circuit. And so this week we're going to be adding a cooling circuit to it uh, and getting it all coded up, wired together and in a nice pretty little container. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Hope you are too. Let's do this thing. So our cooling circuit is going to be essentially pumping cold water through this heat sink. This heat sink is going to be glued or taped to the side of our PCR chassis. Cold water is going to flow through. It's going to suck away the heat. We're going to be happy. Now to pump the water, we're going to be using a peristaltic pump, which looks like this. It's a really small pump, only uh, 12 volts, I believe, of power. So we just have to combine this with a 12 volt power source um, and use the same trick we used in the last video. So if you remember from the last video, we used something called a transistor, which looks like this, to turn our heater circuit on or off depending on a signal that we send out with the Arduino. So for this pump, we're going to be doing exactly the same thing, um, but instead of passing current through a relay, we're going to be passing it through the pump to turn it on. Now you might ask, is it Michaela, why do we need this? Why can't we just map the Arduino send power to the pump without using a transistor? Short answer is that there's not enough power in the Arduino. There's not enough juice. This thing takes 12 volts of energy. There is no way that the Arduino is gonna pump out 12 volts. Also the current that the pump can draw will short out the board, it's a mess. So for high voltage applications, you're going to want a more powerful voltage source like this thing. Um, but using a transistor, you can send a small, like, 3 volt signal from the Arduino and use that to switch your 12 volt signal to the pump. Okay, so you can kind of see how these two circuits here for heating and cooling are a little bit similar. They're both using a transistor. There's power, which is the red wire, going to the right-hand side of both of these, except the power is coming from the Arduino in one circuit and this adapter in the other circuit. So essentially, we're gonna set, use the Arduino to send a switch. Once that switch is sent, it's going to allow power from red to green. Current is going to flow, and then it's going to flow through this little circuit which sends power to the motor. And if you'll notice, I wired this diode right here in such a way that once the pump turns off, it's going to allow voltage to get dissipated back throughout the circuit and go straight to ground. So that is how this is going to work. And now we just have to code it into our logic and test it out. It took a while, but we got it. Look at this. It's so much smaller than the last one, which is so important because this is so much less aluminum we actually need to heat up, which is going to be key in getting the temperature to go up or down as quickly as we want it to. These are the holes for the heaters to go in, and these are the three test tube chambers. Oh man, I'm excited.
So yeah, I'm gonna plug it in, load up the code, and see if this actually works. All right, here we go. Science is about to happen in our lives, and it's gonna be great because we're gonna plug things in, and it's gonna be wonderful. Okay, good. Pump is going, do you see that? Okay, pump is running. Okay, now we just need to upload our sketch to... Do you see those bubbles? Everything's working. Now we just need to upload our program, which has the times in it, to... Oh, I think it's actually working. The heaters are on, the heaters are on. The heaters are on and they're supposed to be on. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna... Okay, so check it out. Temperature is reading 24.15 degrees C. This relay is turning on for four seconds and then turning off for one second, exactly like I programmed it. So this is the heating cycle. As soon as this is going to get to our target temperature of 90 degrees, that should shut off and should turn on the pumps. So it's definitely working. The next question is, is this getting hot? As you can see, 25.43, heater is on, connected over here, being sensed. You can tell it's getting hot. The, the, the bar is definitely getting warm. So that is a good sign. 27 degrees, it's only been like 30 seconds and it's already up a couple degrees, that's cool. Uh, it's definitely not as fast as uh, we were hoping it would be, but it's still going pretty fast. It's like one degree every uh, 30 seconds. Despite the initial increase of a few degrees in temperature, it very quickly became clear that these heaters were not going to get it to 95 degrees. It took a long time just to get it up five or 10 degrees. Hey guys, so a quick video update. Um, because we could not get the instrument up to temperature effectively, that means one of two things, either the heaters aren't strong enough or the heat transfer isn't good enough. So we got to test both of those things. Uh, so in light of that, I removed the heat sink from the uh, heating instrument, um, from basically the chassis, so we can examine how well this heats without the extra metal that's stuck onto the side. Um, I thought that was going to be negligible, but it might not be. So we're gonna see. Um, the second thing we tried to maybe fix is the thermal conductivity. So if there were some air pockets in the chassis where the heaters were, that would keep them from heating uh, as well as a direct metal to metal contact. So I put some thermal paste inside the holes here and here and put more thermal paste in here where the temperature probe is. So we're gonna give this a run and see how hot we can get this chassis um, without any extra bits attached to it. Removing the heat sinks did a lot to help the problem, but it wasn't nearly good enough. We need this thing to get up to 95 degrees and we could barely get it up to 50. This is kind of confusing since I know that my math wasn't wrong when I calculated how much heat we needed. So it might have been a heater issue. That's the next thing we need to test. So in light of that, I got two new heating cartridges uh, from an independent website. I'll put the link in the description below, rather than the super cheap $5 ones that I got from Amazon that had no reviews on them. Okay guys, I swear to you, I left this going for like three minutes. It's already at 50, 56 degrees? Holy crap, this is heating up so much. I don't even have that much thermal paste. 62? It was the heaters. The heaters were the problem. It's at 70 now. It's going up 8 degrees per second. What? This is crazy. I feel it. Like, I feel the heat. It is really hot right now. Oops, sorry. It is really hot right now. Family friendly. 82? 88? Come on, get there. Get there, sweetie. You know you can get to 95. 94.6, 95.12, 98.6, yes, it's over 100. We did it, we did it, Cortez, we did it. I did it, you, you gave me emotional support and I really appreciate you. Uh, it's a quote, Nelly, it's hot and hard. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, while I was like turning the video off, it's now 137. I'm gonna unplug this. Uh, cause it's uh, gonna get a little too hot for that. Okay! Yeah, this is really hot. Many things are burning right now. So we're gonna have to do some, some cooling damage control. This is why I made the control loops. Next time I won't get it to 150 degrees. It'll stay at 90. It'll get cooled by the water. Everything will be okay. So with confirmation that my heaters were working, the next test was to put the cooling system back on the block to see if that was taking away too much heat for it to get up to 95 degrees. This is really the best way to troubleshoot something in engineering. You take away one variable and test the system. All right, I've left this going for a few minutes. It's pretty clear this has reached steady state. It's not getting above 44 degrees with this cooler attached. And so we decided to go back to the original plan, uh, which was using a cooling fan to reduce the temperature. Now we said before this wasn't gonna cool it nearly fast enough, and that's still true, but given the choice between not cooling it at all and using a fan, the fan will definitely, definitely help things. So I connected the fan to the same circuit that I connected the cooling pump to. It was actually pretty easy to replace uh, and we're gonna give it a final go. Okay, well, we changed out the liquid cooling system for a regular fan and we're gonna try to test this loop for one final experiment to see the results of our handiwork. Hold on, this was supposed to be cooler. Let's do this. Okay, I just attached two grounding wires uh, to the ends instead of just having one grounding wire. It already jumped up by eight degrees. Maybe that was it. Or maybe it was just a giant coincidence. I don't know, but either way, the temperature's going up. So, holly freaking luya. Okay, I see you. 76. Almost at 90. Oh my goodness, 82? And as soon as it hits 90, that fan is gonna turn on, wait for it. Well, 95. As soon as it hits 95, this fan is gonna turn on. 95, turn on. Yes, you see it? Do you see it going? Okay, fan has turned on, which means it's now going to cool down to 55 degrees. Let's see how long it takes to cool to 55 degrees with the fan. Now this is probably gonna take a long time given that it's not liquid cooling. 65. Oh my God, I can't believe this contraption is working. 63. Come on, come on, come on. 56. 54. But oh my gosh, guys, we did it. We made a circuit. It can heat something up to 95 extremely quickly. It can cool something down to 55 in under five minutes. This actually kind of worked. And I'm so, so psyched for this. What is up, guys? So this concludes my foray into trying to make a PCR reactor at home. And we learned so much. I am so happy with how this turned out. It was really complicated and we had a lot of setbacks. Not only did we had to learn how to make a lot of these different circuits from scratch, um, but our liquid cooling system ended up not performing as well as we would have hoped because it took away too much heat and our heaters were not strong enough. So we had a change to a fan, which actually was getting the job done. I think my favorite part was just sort of seeing it all to come together. Um, seeing the heaters and the coolers and the temperature sensors all work in conjunction to get this thing going was I think my favorite part. But either way, this was such a cool project. I'm probably gonna press pause uh, on this for now because I think it's pretty much kind of finished. I did what I set out to do. I got a five degree per second heating increase. Um, we figured out a workaround to the liquid cooling and Honestly, I'm really satisfied with this. I think this was an incredibly fun project. Some issues that I still think persisted was that the heating coils took a long time to actually get going. I'm still not sure why that is. I'm not sure if that was a default thing of the heating coil itself, or that was because of my wiring. Um, if anyone in the comments wants to venture a guess, I'm happy to get here any suggestions. But yeah, 
I think this is awesome. This is a wonderful first video series and I can't wait to make more robots and cool things for you guys. So definitely subscribe, give this video a like, stay tuned. I'm gonna be building way more stuff. It's gonna be awesome. Um, and we're gonna learn a lot about engineering along the way. So with this PCR project completed, uh, this is Izzy Michaela signing out. Till next time, bye.